Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomo's Biology. And in this video lecture, we are want to talk about protein structure and especially the protein structure hierarchy. Okay, because you know, uh, this is the overview of protein structure that you must know, you all must know. And we all know that it starts with amino acid sequences and amino acids are the building blocks of protein. But how exactly those amino acids are linked together and so many different types of bonds that will ultimately form a protein structure that we know for example hemoglobin or collagen which are uh, like huge protein structures from those amino acids so the question is how exactly uh, we, we are going from a simple amino acid to a complex protein structures so for for that to know we need to just know about the hierarchy of protein structure and in that case we can break it down into the first thing that is the primary structure of the protein then it comes the secondary structure of proteins similarly then the third part a little more complex tertiary and the fourth one is quaternary So primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary or we can also say it like primary is first degree, then secondary, second degree, tertiary, third degree and quaternary is fourth degree. Okay. And the complexity if we, if we write it down based on the less complex to high complex. So low to high complexity. So now, uh, this is again uh, like a second two different part video. The first part of the video, I'm just going to tell you about the overview. While in the second part, uh, we are going to talk about a little more details about the structures. And also, I'm going to make different videos for all those different types of protein structures that you can even learn in more details. But for beginning, the primary structure is nothing but the polypeptide chain. That is the amino acids linked with each other. So it's a simple polypeptide chain. The second one, secondary structure is that polypeptide chain, but they have internal hydrogen bonds. So it's kind of a intra linked polypeptide chain. And the example for it is alpha helix beta sheet and other types of coils and turns. The third type of structure that is a little more complex that is tertiary we will see more and more forces uh, to come and join together. In the tertiary structure this is intra plus interlinked polypeptide. That means there are several secondary structures together. They are further connected with other types of chemical bonds, but not covalent bond. Non-covalent bonds are there. Okay. But now in this case, what we know here that we have the secondary structures and we have multiple secondary structures linked with each other with different bonds. While in quaternary structures, this is multiple polypeptides linked together and all of those polypeptides contain their tertiary structures so think of an idea we have a polypeptide chain which is very simple with all the amino acids and it's folded to form alpha helix then we have more alpha helix and some of the beta turns and some other alpha helix this is the tertiary structure then finally we have uh, let's say one of such tertiary structure and the other one something like this and the other one let's say like this all of this with of course beta turns and beta sheet so let's say three such structures all of them are finally linked 
to form one giant protein with multiple subunits that is the quaternary structure while we have simply one functional polypeptide unit with multiple secondary structure that is a tertiary structure and we have either helix or a bitter sheet secondary structure nothing but hydrogen bonds and the simplest one that is polypeptide chain so you see we have different levels of organization of all these different types of structures okay now but one important thing i must say is that a protein needs to at least have the conformation of a tertiary structure or quaternary structure for becoming an effective protein and it will be able to do its job its function inside the cell otherwise it's not possible because tertiary structures provide all the active sites for the enzymes or say quaternary structures can also provide that kind of uh, different regions of the protein that they needs for a proper functionality inside the cell secondary structure itself is not enough or primary structure is not at all stable because it can be degraded by different enzyme and attacks so they need to convert it into the tertiary or quaternary structure for a properly functional one now let's see the second part of this uh, video which is an animation which explains you exactly how this the structure start folding from primary to secondary to tertiary to quaternary structures and they form uh, the life examples now one live example of the quaternary structure is hemoglobin contains multiple subunits they are linked with each other alpha and beta units two versions of each now let's look at the second part and then we'll talk about the rest now situation is listed like we know that how the hemoglobin behaves when it's interacting with the oxygen now hemoglobin and oxygen are attached with each other it's bound properly now the job of hemoglobin is to release the oxygen in the nearby tissue where the oxygen pressure is less that's the job and when the oxygen pressure is high it will keep remain bound with the oxygen now there is a fact or a phenomenon known as Bohr effect that illustrates the effect of pH upon the binding of oxygen to the hemoglobin let's look at this process and again to understand that we need to look into the oxygen saturation graph of hemoglobin and in this oxygen saturation graph you can see here that in the x-axis we have the partial pressure of the oxygen in tor and in the y-axis we have the percent saturation of the oxygen so if you look at here in some cases it lists partial saturation uh, percent saturation in this case it's given as a uh, the, the concentration of oxygen that is present now this indicates that the p50 of the hemoglobin decreases as the ph increases okay and in other words you can say the oxygen affinity of the hemoglobin increases with the increasing pH so as we are increasing the pH from 7.2 to 7.4 towards 7.6 the affinity towards the oxygen is also increasing with time and then you consider that the hemoglobin at pH 7.4 has equilibrated or with the oxygen at uh, 30 torr the value of YO2 here will be about 0.45 at this range. If the pH suddenly increased to 7.6, if you look at here, if suddenly increased to 7.6, the YO2 will increase about 0.65. The arrow indicates that the increased binding of oxygen by hemoglobin due to the pH change. This means that more oxygen will be bound if the pH increases. If the pH drops from pH 7.4 to 7.2, if it goes for 7.4 to 7.2, YO2 will decrease and about 10% of the binding sites will release the oxygen. This acid induced release of oxygen is known as the Bohr effect. So if an environment is acidic, more of a less pH, it's more likely that the hemoglobin is going to release oxygen in those environment more so the tissue who is lacking the oxygen and require oxygen contains less of a pH more of an acidic environment so that uh, the hemoglobin can release oxygen in those tissues 
and at the at the at the lungs when the hemoglobin needs to bind to the uh, to the oxygen uh, they contains more of a basic environment or more of a higher ph environment now the higher or lower we are talking about it's not about like 9 ph 9 or ph 10 for high ph 4 5 for low it's never like that because it's not possible in the living organism it's mostly balanced near 7 so the vary will be in the decimal point for the 7 for example we saw here once the ph was 7.6 there is a specific saturation and the affinity is much higher. So more pH, more affinity towards the oxygen for the hemoglobin. If the pH gets low, less affinity towards the oxygen, so the hemoglobin will tend to release oxygen more faster in those cases. And that's what we are looking at here. So it will vary in fraction of 7. So pH 7 is let's say the normal pH. Now for, for let's say for the tissues where they need to release oxygen, will be the pH of 7.2 or 7 something like that and when uh, in the lungs the pH should be like 7.6, 7.8 something like that. So that in a sense is the Bohr effect. So if you like this video please hit the like button, share this video and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that. Remember sharing is caring and it also help us to promote so that more and more students can watch this and can get benefits just like you did. Okay, and feel free to comment about the video and also if you think there are some part that we want to talk and you, we need to talk about and make videos about, you can also share your ideas. Thank you.